Okay guys, welcome back to Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now we are going to solve uh, this problem and learn the two cases which will help you to determine the moment of inertia for any given shaded area. So this is the example from chapter 10 Hebelostatics and in the prob this is the example second example from chapter 10 and this example says that determine the moment of inertia for the shaded area shown about the x axis so we have to find the moment of inertia about the x axis so we have this only one formula that is i of x the moment of inertia about the x axis this is always equal to the y square times da if we are finding the moment of inertia for an area here we will have da and if here we have x then here we will have y square and if you want to find the moment of inertia about the y axis then that will be equal to the integration of x square times da but keep in mind that these two formula are applicable whenever each and every part of the differential area is located uh, at equal distance from the x-axis so if we look into this differential area this is the dif uh, this is our defined differential area which is a rectangular shape so each element of this differential area is located at a distance of y from the x-axis so this formula is applicable to this to this case this is case one and if you people define your shaded area like this and if you people want to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis so then for this shaded area the each element of this differential area is not equidistant from the x-axis let's say if we look into this part of the differential area so it is at a distance of y but that's y will be less than this this part right so let's say this is also located at some distance from the x-axis let's say that distance is y uh, y1 let's say and this is y so y1 is greater than y so this formula is not applicable for for this case for case 2 so for case 2 we need to apply the uh, parallel axis theorem and then when we apply the parallel axis theorem so first of all we have to find uh, the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis right this is the centroidal axis this x dash is the axis which passes through the centroid of this differential area so first of all we need to find the moment of inertia of this differential element about the centroidal axis so that will be that will be known as d i x dash and then uh, what does the parallel axis theorem says that the parallel axis theorem says that if you people want to find the moment of inertia of this uh, differential element so that di of x will be equal to the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis is plus some value and that value will be the uh, will be y square times uh, we can say that that will be y tilde times uh, da and this will be y, y tilde squares times da so now what does this mean is that uh, since it's a parallel axis theorem we are using the term parallel so by parallel we mean is that uh, this this uh, parallel axis theorem is only applicable to find the moment of inertia uh, about those two axis which are parallel to each other so in this particular case the x dash axis and this x axis they are parallel to each other so this will not be applicable if you people want to find the moment of inertia about the y axis and uh, you people know the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis so that will not be applicable to this case right since the y axis and the x dash axis they are not parallel to each other so parallel axis theorem is always applicable to uh, those two axes which are parallel to each other this is the first uh, rule and then the second rule is that uh, you people must know the moment of inertia about any one of these two axes 
So now in this particular case, uh, we know uh, we know indirectly or we can find the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. Is, and then what we do is that we aid this term, right? And this term is the area, it is area multiplied by that uh, y square. And th this is y tilde square. So what is y tilde? Y tilde is the uh, location of this axis, is, location of this axis is from this axis is, about which we want to find the moment of inertia. So we want to find the moment of inertia about the, the x axis. Is. So the distance between these two parallel axes is, is y tilde. And what is y tilde? Y tilde is always the location of the centroid of the differential element from the x axis. Is. So now in this particular case, y tilde is uh, y divided by 2. If the height of this differential area is y, and the centroid of this differential area is always located at half the height of this uh, dA. So then y tilde, the location of the centroid from the x-axis will be in, uh, half the length of this. So this y tilde is y divided by 2. So now we will use uh, both of these cases to find the moment of inertia of this same shaded area and the profile of the shaded area is defined by this y square equals to 40x right so we 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 need we need to learn both the cases that how we can find the moment of inertia of a given shaded area using th these two methods so in case one uh, the differential area is parallel to the x axis is about which we want to find the moment of inertia so we can use this formula directly so then we have to find our differential area so differential this is our differential area and this end of the differential area is located at a distance of x from the y axis and it is located at a distance y from the x axis. So if we write the coordinates of this point, so that is x and y coordinates. And now the width of uh, this whole area is 100 mm. So if we define the base of this rectangle or the width of this uh, differential area so that will be 100 minus this x right if this differential area uh, is located somewhere here then this will be x this will be x and this is 100 so then its width will be 100 minus x so the width of the differential area is located by this function that is 100 minus x Right, so we can write for case one that dA will be equal to this width, which is 100 minus x into the height. So that is dy, right? That is differential uh, height of this dA. So this is dA. So now I can put this uh, dA in this equation. I x equals to uh, y square times dA and dA is 100 minus x dy. Now as we can see that the integration is with respect to y and here we have x. So we have to represent this x as a function of y otherwise we will not be able to integrate this. So this is y square equals to uh, 400x. So from this we can write that x is equal to y square divided by 400. So now this is x in terms of y. So now I can write that i x. This is y square. This is 100 minus and instead of x we have to write this. So this is y square divided by 400 dy. And now if I multiply this y square inside so we will have 100 y square minus y to the power 4 divided by 400 and dy and now we need to integrate this uh, with respect to y so the y limits are from y equals to 0 until y equals to 200 so this is the maximum value of y so we have to integrate this from y equals to 0 until y equals to 200 mm so now we can integrate this if i integrate this so this is 100 y to the power 3 divided by 3 minus y to the power 5 divided by uh, 400 into 5 and this is from 0 to 200 so now we can put these limits this is uh, 100 100 divided by 3 and now y is 200 to the power 3 minus 
200 divided by 5 into 400 is 20,000. So, and if we put 0, so everything will become 0. So, this is. Uh, so, now when we solve this, we get this answer. So, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is 106 point. We can say that this is 106.67 and this is uh, 200 to the power 5 and the units of moment of inertia are this is uh, millimeter square and this is millimeter square. So, this is millimeter, this is into 10 raised to the power 6 millimeter to the power 4. So, this is I x. So this is the value of I x using the case 1 when the area is parallel to the x-axis about which we want to find the moment of inertia. Now, for the second case, uh, we will apply that parallel axis theorem. So, this is case 2. Let me write that this is case 2. So, now for case 2, again, I will write the parallel axis theorem. So, we want to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis and this x axis is, is parallel to the centroidal axis so that will be equal to the uh, moment of inertia about the x dash axis is about the centroidal axis plus y tilde square times dA. So, this is we can write this as dIx and this is now the moment of inertia of a rectangular area about the centroid is known. We have determined that in the previous video uh, that is the 10 1 example which says that the moment of inertia about the x dash for a rectangle will be equal to 1 divided by 12 and the base this is this is the base uh, which is dx for this differential area the base is dx this is dx so that is dx uh, multiply by the height cube. Let me write the general formula. So, that is I x is 1 divided by 12 b h cube. So, now for this differential area base is uh, dx and h is y. So, we can write that this is y to the power 3. And now, if we, if you want to, uh, if we are writing this for the differential area, then this will be di x dash, right. So, we know di x dash that is 1 divided by 12 uh, let me write this y cube first. So, that is y cube dx and y tilde square. So, y tilde is I have told you people that uh, this is the the location of one axis from another, right? Or the distance or we can say that it is the spacing between the two parallel axes. So, the, now the, the spacing between these two parallel axes is y divided by 2. So, I will write that this is y divided by 2 square times dA dA is we can write that this dA. So, now here now for this particular case uh, dA is this dx times y. So, we can write this is y times dx right. So, we cannot use this dA since this was for the first case for the second case dA is y times dx right. So, uh, make sure that you whatever you people have defined your area uh, write that differential area according to those parameters right. So, this dA is y times dx. So, I will write that this is y times dx and this is we can write that this is 1 divided by 12 y to the power 3 dx and this will be y square divided by 4 into y. So, this will become y3 into dx and now we can add both of these right. So, if 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 we take uh, y cube dx outside so that will be we can write this is 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 4 this is y cube dx so this will give us 1 divided by 3 right if we take this as an lcm this is 1 plus uh, this is 4 this is 3 right so 3 plus 1 4 4 divided by 2 so this is 1 divided by 3 so now we can write that this is 1 divided by 3 y to the power 3 dx this is dix so, now this is dIx means that this is the uh, moment of inertia of this differential area about the x axis and we are interested to find the moment of inertia of this whole blue shaded area. So, for that what we need to do is that we need to integrate this, we need to integrate this and 
Now, as we can see that the integration is with respect to x, so we have to write this y in terms of x, and we have to integrate this from x equals to 0 until x equals to 100 mm. So this is from x equals to 0 until x equals to 100 mm. And this d and this integration will cancel out, so we will get i of x. So this is the moment of inertia of the whole shaded area about the x-axis. This will be equal to now we need to, uh, I will write this one divided by 3 outside of integra integration and this is 0 to 100 and y to the power 3 dx. Now we are given this y equals to 400x. So now from this we can write that from this oh, we can write that y equals to 400x. This is y square and if we take the square root, so that will be uh, 1 divided by 2. We can write it like this and now y to the power 3. Let me write that this is 400 to the power 1 divided by 2. And now to the power 3, so we have to take to the power 3 for this. So that will be, the, if we need to multiply this, so this is 400 to the power 3 divided by 2 and this is x to the power 3 divided by 2. So now this is y to the power 3. So now we have to replace this y cube by this value. So this is this is 400 or we can write that constant outside of integration. So that is 400 400 to the power 3 divided by 2 and here we can write x to the power 3 divided by 2. So now this is let me find this constant first that is 400 to the power 3 divided by 2 divided by 3 this gives me uh, 2667 uh, let me write that is 2666.67 and now if, if i integrate this so this will be x 3 divided by 2 plus 1 so 3 divided by 2 plus 1 is 5 divided by 2 so i will write it as 5 divided by 2 and we have to divide it by that same power that is 5 divided by 2 or we can write it as 2 divided by 5 and this is from 0 to 100. Now we need to we can multiply this with 2 divided by 5 so let me multiply this answer by 2 divided by 5. So this is 1066.1066 x to the power 5 divided by 2 from 0 to 100 and now we need to put these limits this is 1066.67 and this is 100 to the power 5 divided by 2 and if I put 0 so everything will become 0 so this is minus 0 so now we need to multiply this answer with 100 to the power 5 divided by 2 this is 5 divided by 2. So this is again we got that same answer that is 106.67 106.67 into 10 raised to power 6 mm to the power 4 that is that same i of x. So we get this i of x by using this case 1 taking the differential area parallel to the x axis about which we want about that axis is about which we want to find the uh, moment of inertia. And if we take the differential area perpendicular to the axis about which we want to find the moment of inertia, then we have to apply the parallel axis theorem. But both cases or both methods should give us that same moment of inertia. So I hope this will help you in your learning. And the same method is going to be applied to each and every problem related to the moment of inertia. So I hope this will help you in your learning. Do let me know if it helps in your learning in the comment section. Also, subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet.